15th day of April. It has been exactly one month since the governor announced the first three COVID-19 positive uh, patients. And it, uh, it seems like a lot longer. And uh, someone we want to get onto the uh, show here to uh, kind of chat with us about what uh, the Guam Police Department has been up to. Let's uh, welcome to the program uh, GPD Chief Steve Ignacio. Good morning, Chief. Morning, Chris. How are you? Uh, we got Sabrina here, too. Hey, good morning, Sabrina. Hi, good morning. Uh, Chief, let's just backtrack. I haven't heard from you in a, in a minute. How was your Easter? Uh, very uneventful. Uh, stayed home uh, most of the day. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Yep, <laughs> yep. Stay home! Stay home. That's right. Stay home. <laughs> so, Chief, uh, I guess we just called you for an update. Can you just kind of uh, start back and uh, give us an idea of what uh, the Guam Police Department, uh, maybe first we could start uh, with, uh, you know, there's been some incidents of crime out there. Where are we with the uh, patrols? And, you know, I know that some of the manpower is being used at the uh, road closure. So just, I guess, what can you tell us on the status of uh, police officers out there patrolling the neighborhoods? So, uh, uh, Chris, the, the patrol element or the, the patrol operations bureau is always going to be intact uh, no matter what uh, is going on in our community, whether it be a typhoon, a tropical storm, or in this case, the coronavirus. Uh, we always plan to make sure that uh, at all times the uh, patrol operations uh, is manned 24-7. So uh, we, we, we make sure that we have enough personnel uh, to meet the, the patrol uh, requirements uh, at all times. And then uh, from there, when, once we uh, figure out uh, what the, uh, the people are, the, the personnel are that we can pull off to help with the other assignments. So, uh, you know, uh, as we continue to move forward, uh, we've actually identified some of the officers from the uh, initial security assignment for the coronavirus and we've, we're taking them out over the weekend and we're putting them back to the patrol operations. Mm -hmm. Are so we patrol operations is the backbone of the Guam Police Department. Right. And I understand that uh, GPD, you guys are being augmented by other law enforcement agencies? Uh, yes, yes, Sabrina. I'd like to thank, uh, you know, the Guam Customs and Quarantine Agency, uh, the Judiciary of Guam, uh, we have the marshals. And we have the school resource and school attendance officers and uh, the conservation officers from the Department of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. And so they, are they out on patrol as well? No, uh, they are assisting us with uh, primarily with uh, the security at the uh, different uh, facilities that we're providing security for. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, I did want to ask about, uh, there was an incident that occurred uh, at the Harmon Breeze Apartments. Yes, and, you know, people, that's just one example of how people are really starting to feel very scared um, and frightened. And I, and, and then you have uh, these curfew violators, uh, these knuckleheads that are running around um, in the middle of the night and, you know, breaking into people's homes. Um, and maybe just something that you can say t to, to help alleviate the fears that people, the fears and the anxiety that people are having now. Yes, Sabrina, thank, thanks. Uh, that's a good question. So, again, we go back to the concept that at all times, there's always a, a patrol operations, and uh, the patrolmen are always available. You know, in the case of the Harmon Breeze, uh, we were able to make a, an apprehension, I, th I think, that same evening, if not the next day. So, yeah, you know, regardless of what's going on in the community with, with coronavirus, we're still responding to and, and dealing with these cases as they come making sure that we give them the full attention that they deserve. Uh, Chief, I got to ask if uh, you guys are at all uh, aware of uh, the Attorney General's... Um, re they booked and released a couple of uh, these teenagers who were involved. And, you know, he had uh, released a statement that I'm trying to find here. I have it. Okay. Um, I want to make sure it's the right one because right. I got two. Uh, so his his statement was... The offenders were issued a notice to appear within three years. There is a major concern with individuals who are arrested and confined introducing the virus to the prison population. It is our understanding that DOC has been in contact with public health for guidance as we deal with this public health emergency. The AG's office, along with many other jurisdictions in the nation, have to weigh concerns of spreading the virus to correctional employees, the prison population, and our community in general against the immediate incarceration of offenders. The Judiciary of Guam's administrative orders, coupled with guidance DOC received from public health, also help to frame the Attorney General's decision on whether or not to confine or issue notice to appear to offenders. 
The OAG still continues to recommend confinement for defendants who pose the highest risk of danger to the community and will continue to put careful thought into its decisions during the quarantine period and beyond. This is in line with what is happening all across the country, and we, along with law enforcement agencies and stakeholders like public health, will continue to do what we can to keep our community safe from the virus while balancing the need to hold offenders accountable for their actions. As we move through this unprecedented territory in dealing with the pandemic, we ask the community to stay informed and keep open communication with our office. Yes. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, I've you know, I understand the concerns that the Attorney General has, and I, uh, you know, I, I, I do recall that uh, I think an employee of the Department of Corrections mm -hmm. um, may have tested positive. Uh, so, you know, uh, th those are, you know, uh, valid concerns. Uh, you know, however, I, I don't control uh, what the decisions of the Attorney General. Uh, right. Right. How does it make you feel, though, Chief, to know that your officers are out here responding to things? Uh, you know, we interviewed the victim uh, in this case, and uh, they had said that when uh, they saw the uh, perps. Uh, trying to break into the cars, they called them out, hey, what are you doing? Get out of here. And the neighbors came out, and it was at that point that the perps were uh, then said, oh, we're, we were going to kill you, and they started throwing hollow blocks. I'm sure you've seen the pictures. Uh, but, yes, you know, you, you're you know, and, then, and I'm sure, uh, you know, the the, uh, the victims, uh, not just the, the ones you interviewed, but all the other victims within that apartment, apartment complex, I'm sure they were fearful for their lives, and, uh, you know, we responded appropriately, and we, we took uh, the appropriate action. But, uh, you know, uh, I, again, you know, uh, the, the decisions uh, of other agencies outside of the Guam Police Department, uh, unfortunately, is beyond, uh, you know, anything that I can control. Right. I have read stories of uh, other jurisdictions, though, uh, where uh, they have uh, done early release of uh, prisoners or inmates, uh, sharing those same concerns about, you know, the spread of coronavirus. Right. And so we did see the, uh, the Department of Corrections uh, release uh, some pretrial detainees. Right, and, and according to jo uh, Lieutenant Governor Josh Chinoria, when we interviewed him last week, the release of the pretrial detainees was uh, based on them having a non-violent uh, yeah. uh, And this is a violent offense. crime. Yeah. Yes, and, you know, and again, you know, like I said, uh, I am not uh, sure uh, what, what uh, uh, guidance uh, the Attorney General was giving. Yeah. Uh, you know, I respect his decision. Uh, he is the... Uh, in charge of the attorney general's office and they decide uh, how to prosecute cases i think it's weak chief and i, I feel for you guys because uh you know uh people throw it on you uh, what are they going to say oh the guam police department not bad but you guys are doing it you're going out there you're busting these guys even with all this covid 19 going on and then we get some harebrained excuse that oh they yeah well, they're going to let them out because what kind of message does that send that sends the message out there to like these these knuckleheads who are going to threaten our citizens that if they get arrested, uh, they're going to get released because, you know, we don't want them to catch COVID. I, I, you know, I, I, again, Chris, you know, understandably, yeah. uh, there's fears and concerns. Uh, and then, you know, we, we take that and balance with uh, all the other issues that we're facing. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, Chief, I, I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> and so Actually, obviously there's nothing. Answer, and, you know, I understand uh, the, also the fears of, and concerns of the, the victims themselves. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, again, you know, we go back to the concept that, you know, these, these victims are feel like they're being victimized now by the criminal justice system. Right. R right. Yeah. So, I know Paul's mentioned this, uh, the importance of the neighborhood watch programs, and, and, you know, at this point, we have to look out for each other. And if you could also just stress the importance of that. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, we, we, we rely on our neighborhood watch programs. Uh, not just to help the Guam Police Department, but also, you know, to keep uh, each other safe as neighborhood watch groups. Uh, you know, I, I've been a part, of, or I'm still a part of many neighborhood watch uh, chat groups, and, uh, they, you know, they, they do a very excellent job at uh, watching out for each other. And so, you know, I like to applaud the different neighborhood watch groups and the mayor's offices and their efforts, uh, you know, to get these neighborhood watch programs started and working with us to collaborate, you know, to help keep their community safe. Okay. Is there anything else you wanted to, to add or maybe you plan on talking with the AG or public health or whoever you need to talk to about maybe finding some sort of a better solution um, other than, you know, book and release? I'm not uh, sure what you know, are that, that, what's that, the criteria that you decide who gets to be booked and released or are we just book and releasing everybody? Are we confining anybody? And, you know, you don't have the answer to that right. question. Yeah, you know, we, 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 do, we, we have a criteria. You know, we, we do confine people, especially in violent crimes such as... Uh, 
the, the one at Harmon Ridge Apartments. Uh, and again, you know, uh, the AG's probably has a, the AG's office has probably has a different criteria. Uh, understandably, I, I think if these were different times and we weren't dealing with the right. coronavirus, I think there, I, I strongly believe that there would have been a different outcome. Uh, but you know, un unfortunately, we are you know trying to balance uh, the needs of the community, uh, me meeting the expectations of the victims in our community. Uh, you know, but also realizing that uh, these are very different times uh, that we're having to deal with. Mm -hmm. Just have to sort through it. Uh, these are, uh, these, this, this is unprecedented. I, we, I've, in my 32 years, I've never dealt with a, uh, a pandemic like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's a learning experience for, for the entire community. All right. Anything else, Chief? No, I, I'd like to thank you for inviting me out to the show. You know, I, uh, uh, it's been a while. Yes, I, I miss... Uh, Having the, the interaction with uh, KOM and the, the reporters, I look, look forward to getting past this uh, so we can uh, meet up again. All, All right. right. Yeah, well, us too, Chief. We miss you. All right, Chris. Miss you be guys. safe. Be uh, safe. Wash your hands, Chief. I will. I will. I will. Wear okay. your face mask, Chris. <laughs> 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 Always. Mask up, 840. That's uh, GPD uh, Police Chief uh, Steve Ignacio. You can feel the frustration. I mean, he's a he's a classy guy. He's never going to really, uh, you know, back talk or down speak anybody, but... I think it's clear, you know, hey, it's not our call. Yeah. And, you know, we did uh, put in a call to the Attorney General's office actually uh, yesterday to try and uh, get an interview oh, with him and yeah. give him the opportunity to kind of explain um, this whole book and release, book and confine uh, yeah, process and so that everybody understands right. the rationale behind yeah. the decisions that are being made and why, they, why they're why they important, I guess. So um, hopefully we can still get that interview before we uh, run out of time today. Yeah, I just texted uh, Carlina because, uh, you know, what I thought was problematic, Bree, and this is a little BTS information, but, uh, you know, an attorney general is elected to a four-year office and in uh, putting out a decision like this that has wide-reaching ramifications to the public, to victims of crime, and to the criminals, I think that they need to stand up and answer the questions. And so the response we got was, oh, could you send a bullet point list of any questions you might have? I mean, you know, put on your big boy pants and stand in the fire and people have concerns. They're concerned. I mean, you're setting criminals free and these uh, particular criminals threaten the lives of the victims. And so now uh, we have the victims. You look and they can't believe it. Like Chief Ignacio said, uh, they feel like they're being not only victimized by the criminals in this uh, case, but being victimized by the criminals.